Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. I hope you're well. If you're new here, nice to meet you. I am Becca and I waffle on about all sorts of different wonderful magical things and today I want to talk about a personal journey for me and it's not a topic many people like to talk about. I think it's still quite a taboo topic and I kind of want to break that just a little bit. I am on medication. I have been on medication now for around... Huh. I've been on medication now for around eight months and it's possibly one of the best mental health decisions I've ever made, but I didn't come to this decision lightly. I wasn't keen on the idea of using medication to help with mental health issues and I want to talk a bit about the journey and what led me to decide to take medication. When I was a teenager I was a bit of an oddball, more so than I am now, I know. It's a shock. I would make up stories, I'd be in a little fantasy world and I didn't really understand why it was happening I just knew it was happening and it involved people and looking back it's extremely embarrassing and now I know that I was going through a mental health episode that was unavoidable at the time because I didn't really have any control over my thoughts feelings my thought process any of those things but because the mental health world mental health world world the mental health mental health wasn't taken as seriously when i was a teenager and there wasn't the funding and there wasn't the research and it's come a long way in the past sort of five six seven years so i didn't really have that support then when i was in school and sort of early years of university. I have also always struggled with low moods, particularly around my period or my time of the month, if you want to be more sensitive, which I don't want to be, so period. We're gonna say period a lot because periods are involved in this video. So let's get out of the way. Periods, 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 periods. People bleed. We have periods, it's a thing. But periods are much more than bleeding. Our hormones are all over the place uh, and it's very very complicated. In fact I've recently listened to a really good podcast called 28 Days Later and if you want to learn a bit more about your own menstrual cycle or somebody else's then I really recommend listening to it because it's really interesting and I learned a lot about menstrual cycles that I had no idea about and it's very fascinating so I'll leave a link below but do go and check it out if you would like to know more. I've always been really lucky with my periods because I never get cramps, I never get um, sort of any kind of pain. Sometimes I get pain in my upper legs, yeah, that's a thing. Um, but other than that, not particularly. Certainly not when I was a teenager, ever, at all. But <laughs> the thing I do get is severe mood swings like really bad mood swings. I've talked to people since being a bit more open about this and I know it's not just me, I know women or people who menstruate all over the world experience these things too, I just think we don't talk about it enough and some women or people who menstruate have the cramps and the mood swings or some people only have the cramps and the emotional side of things is a bit more bearable. For me, the emotional side of things was really really bad and <laughs> I recently had a conversation with my mum about this how she always knew when I was on my period because my mood would change very quickly and I was so grumpy and I just didn't become a version of myself I was happy with I was very tense and agitated and nasty sometimes I'm really not proud of how I treated some of my closest friends and family and loved ones because it wasn't nice and I look back and I feel embarrassed and feel annoyed at myself but at the same time in the moment I know I probably couldn't have done anything differently because I was in this emotional hormonal state but 
I felt I had to just get on with it and deal with it and find natural ways of getting on top of it. I did not want to take medication. I really, really didn't. I don't know why, but for some reason, I have always hated anything that manipulates how I feel. I had an operation when I was about 12 or 13 and I wasn't worried about the operation itself. I just didn't like the thought of being put under or put to sleep by general anaesthetic because I didn't like the thought of not being in control of my own body and that is why medication was never, never an option for me. It just filled me with so much dread. <laughs> So, like I say, I felt like I just had to get on with it. I tried natural remedies, I tried to monitor my cycle and just get on top of it, and I did that to a T. I had an app and I tracked it in my journal, and I did vaguely know, roughly, when I was going to have a really down period or be mood-swingy. <laughs> I'm sure there are much more um, scientific terms I could be using, but we're not, we're just having a chat. <laughs> I was adamant that I just wanted to solve it myself, and I think as well as somebody who menstruates and has a menstrual cycle, we are just expected to get on with it, and you're told quite often, oh don't worry, it's only a week out of a month, and you think, yeah of course, like, it's only a week out of a month, and it's only when you actually sit and think about that you realise what that actually means. So a week out of a month means you only have three weeks, usually, that are normal or pain-free or emotionally okay. And that's normal. Sometimes people only have one week of a normal, balanced, hormonal and pain-free time. The only time people definitely only have a week of period pain and emotional pain is if someone is extremely, extremely, extremely regular. And that's not very common. <laughs> but I still pushed through and I still just felt as though I could get on top of it myself without any, any other help. I tried counselling because I thought these depressive spells were because I was depressed, but actually that didn't add up because you don't go from being the lowest of the low, literally not being able to get out of bed, not wanting to go and do anything, to being okay the next day. That doesn't really happen. But again, I didn't want medicine to be involved, so I just kept trying to find these natural remedies. It wasn't until about eight months ago that I had a really, really scary experience where I was so low that I essentially didn't want to be alive anymore. I didn't want this pain anymore because it felt so absolute. It felt so all-encompassing and all... I, I felt like I was suffocating basically for a few days and I spoke to the doctor finally and she said that it's probably got something to do with your period. And I said that I knew that. I said that I'd been monitoring it and just trying to get on board with it and she was so, so lovely. I'm really lucky with my doctor because she suggested going on a very, very low dose of anxiety medication. Um, and she gave me options. I could just take it during my period and have sort of 14 days on and 14 days off, or I could take an exceptionally low dose every single day. I told her about my worries regarding this and how I didn't want it to change the person I was. And she said that it won't change the person you are, it'll just enhance the person you want to be and help you manage the person you don't want to be during those low periods. I think she said it a bit more articulately than that. She, she is a wonderfully spoken doctor. But I actually listened and I took this on board and I said to my family, I'm just gonna go and pick up the prescription and see how I feel when I've picked it up. It took me a week to actually take the first one. And for those of you who don't know, medication for mental health, anxiety, depression, things like that, take around six weeks on average to work. 
So I took the first one, instantly panicked. It was a very stressful time, <laughs> which is ironic, but I was determined to just give it a go. I was fed up of stigmatizing medication myself. Nobody else had told me medication was a bad idea. Nobody else told me that it made you weak or that it would make you a different person. It was literally just from my own opinion. I hadn't done any other research. It was just me being scared of not being in control. So six weeks later, roughly, it probably was longer than six weeks later, I realized I had had a period and not been quite so agitated. There was still the mood swing sort of in my chest and in my brain that I could feel, but it was far more controlled and I felt more able to deal with it. So I wrote this down and then just tried to notice some other subtle changes in my behavior and again spoke to my mum and she said she'd noticed uh, because she hadn't noticed which she was basically saying because she hadn't noticed where my period was she knew that they were doing something two or three months passed and i definitely noticed an improvement but i'd also got lazy with some of my personal coping strategies that's the thing with medication you can't just take it and expect it to be a magic pill that means you're better and that's it you're going to be happy all the time that's not how it works and i think that's actually what put me off medication in the first place i didn't want something to dampen the bad experiences i wanted to actually feel life and when something bad happened i wanted to feel it and when something good happened i also wanted to feel it desperately i'm very very emotional but it doesn't do that it doesn't dampen anything or at least not the ones i'm on i can't speak for all of them i'm just talking about the medication i'm on it helps me stay level and stay more in control but it also meant that i became a little bit lazy so I'd stopped journaling for a week or so and I'd stopped going out for walks because I just felt the medication was enough to help me through. But I was so wrong. <laughs> you see, happiness and achieving a good mental health takes work. It's not just an overnight fix. You don't suddenly see life through rose tinted glasses and you're super happy even when you're taking medication. You still have to work for it and that's really important. It took me a little while to realize this, so maybe five months into taking medication, I had to go back to my coping strategies that helped me before medication, just to see if those two things could work hand in hand, and they definitely do. I am much more able to cope with things now. Um, I still have my wobbles, trust me trust me it's not always perfect and sometimes I have my time of the month and I feel rubbish it's not a good feeling but I do feel much more able to cope with those feelings now and that's not just the medication that's other things too like journaling walking staying hydrated and eating much better than I ever have done but I do think medication helped me to get to a point to allow those things to work. I think possibly doing those things alone might have worked, maybe one day, but I don't think they'd work as effectively as they do alongside the medication. I'm not sure why there is still so much stigma around mental health medication. There is so much we don't know about our brains and it's very hard and can be extremely difficult to regulate our own mental health with no help whatsoever. Finding happiness is a facade. I don't think it actually exists. I don't think there's ever a destination we can get to where we're suddenly happy all the time. It just doesn't happen. And anybody that sells that is very, very wrong. But I do believe that the camera's gonna die. I do believe that we all have the potential to lead the best lives possible and if medication is involved in that then so be it that might be the route that's right for you i know it is the right route for me at the moment but i also like to think that i won't be on medication for the rest of my life 
I like to think that this is just an opportunity for me to explore my potential in a way that keeps me grounded and cushioned in a little safe environment. <laughs> I hope this has helped some of you hearing about my exploration into medication. Please do let me know in the comments if you have ever taken medication for mental health and how it's helped you or obviously you can talk about the other option where it didn't help. I would really, really love to hear your experiences with it. And if you're new, the community is so, so lovely. The comments are always incredible. The amount of times they've made me cry in public is embarrassing. But thank you so much for listening to me waffle on and I hope to see you in the next one. Please do like and subscribe this video and I will see you later on. Please look after yourselves and your little brains, not little brains, it's not an insult, Look after yourselves and your mighty fine brains and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. And again, we're at the end of the video. I don't know how I got through it without my camera dying. There's like